So tonight's topic is called Instructions of the Father. Instructions of the Father. I want to deal with this topic this day. Instructions of the Father. Give me the book of Psalms, okay? Give me Psalm 78. We're going to start at verse 1. Psalm 78, verse 1. Instructions of the Father. Come on. Your ears to the words of my mouth. Now, this is the most that God is speaking through King David. Hold this. Give me the book. This is the Lord speaking through King David. Give me the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 23. Okay, Second Samuel 23, let's start at verse 1. Second Samuel chapter 23, verse 1. Now these be the last words of David. David, the son of Jesse, said, And the man who was raised, who was raised up on high, the anointed of the God of Jacob, and the sweet psalmist, of Israel said. Now this is the Lord is going to be speaking through King David. Go ahead. The spirit of the Lord spake by me. Mm -hmm. And his word was and his word was in my tongue. You see that part right there? The spirit of the Lord spake by me and he, and his word was in my tongue. Go ahead. The God of Israel said the rock of Israel spake to me. Read. He that ruleth over men must be just. Ruling in the fear of God. You see that part right there? That we were just we were just reading about that here in the book of Sirach 1. Read that again, verse 3. Read that again, verse 3. Second Samuel chapter 23, verse 3. The God of Israel said, The rock of Israel spake to me. He that ruleth over men must be just. He that ruling over in men, the fear of God. He says, he that ruleth over men must be just. Meaning what? You must be fearing the Lord. You must be keeping God's commandments. Okay? Ruling in the fear of God. Ruling in the fear of the Most High. That's what we have. We were just reading that in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 1. Now, what I want to show you here is that the Lord spoke through David. Okay? He spoke through David. That's why the truth is the spirit of the Lord speak by me. And his word was in my tongue. Now let's go back to Psalm 78, verse 1. Psalm chapter 78, verse 1. Come on. Give ear, O my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. You see what it's saying? Give ear, O my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. So the Lord is speaking through King David here. Okay. Now, actually, it's, um, it's Asaph, the masculine of Asaph, one of David's uh, singers and all that. So what we're reading here is what? The law and the testimonies of the Lord. The law and the testimonies. Give me that in Psalms 132, verse 11. Psalms 132, verse 12. Let's just get to the point. Psalms 132, verse 12. He's going into the law and the testimony. Okay? He says, give, he says, give ear unto my law. Okay, incline your ears to the words of my mouth. That's the testimony. Psalms 132 verse 12, read that. Psalms 132 verse 12. Come on. If thy children will keep my covenant and my testimony that I shall teach them. Read. Their children shall also sit upon thy throne forevermore. That's when, that's the second coming of Christ. That's what he's going into here. But the point I want to show you is if thy children will keep my covenant and my testimony. Not personal testimonies. No, no. The testimonies of the Lord and his covenant. My covenant and my testimony. That's what the Lord wants us to teach our children. We must teach our children his laws, statutes and commandments, his covenant and his testimony. Read that again, verse 12. Psalms chapter 132, verse 12. If thy children will keep my covenant that I shall teach them, mm. their children shall also sit upon thy throne forevermore. You see what it says? That thy children also, their children also shall sit upon thy throne forevermore. Because the instructions of the fathers is to the children. In order for the fathers to instruct the children, the fathers must be well versed in the scriptures. They must be well studied. 
they must be they must have sat down to go over the scriptures to be able to prepare the children that's coming to teach them and raise them up. That is what we are reading here. Go back to Psalm 78, verse 1 again. Psalm 78, verse 1. Go ahead. Give ear, my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. The laws and the testimonies of the Lord. Watch this. Go ahead. Next verse. Come on. I will open my mouth in a parable. Mm. I will utter dark sayings of old. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old. Of old. So now the Lord is speaking through King David. He says he will, he will open his mouth in a parable. He will utter dark sayings of old. So the parables and the dark sayings, guess what? The fathers are the ones that are going to be able to know what they mean so that they can make them plain to the children. You understand? That is what we are reading here. I will open my mouth in a parable. Watch this. Give me the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 29, verse 29. Watch this. Deuteronomy, chapter 29, verse 29. Deuteronomy, chapter 29, verse 29. Come on. What? The what? But those things, the secret things, belong unto the Lord our God. The secret things belong to the Most High God. Okay, the secret things, they belong to the Lord. Go ahead. But those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever. Mm -hmm. that, we may, that we may do all the words of this law. So now he's saying, he says, the secret things belong unto the Most High God. Okay, but those things which are revealed belong unto us, the fathers, and to our children forever that we may do all the words of this law. So the things that are revealed unto the fathers, that the fathers must reveal them to the children, guess what? Is the laws of the, the laws and the testimonies of Christ. That the sons and daughters must know these things before the Lord returns. Watch this. Give me the book of Amos, chapter 3, verse 7. Amos 3, verse 7. Amos chapter 3 verse 7. Mm -hmm. He revealeth his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. So the servants, which are the prophets, is the fathers which are con commanded or ordained to do what? Ordained by the wisdom of the Lord to teach the children the laws of God. So the secret things, is that surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. The things of old, the dark things of old, the parables. They are revealed to the what? To the fathers. Men that are well studied, that understands this Bible, that will be able to make it plain to the sons and daughters so they may be able to apply it and teach it to their children after them. Okay, go back to Psalm 78, verse 2 again. That word parable there, the word Psalm parable, the, order, the word parable just, just means metaphor, okay? It just means the similitude. You understand? The Lord, he explains one thing. He says one thing by explaining another. Okay? Read that part again. Verse 2. Psalm chapter 78 verse 2. Utter dark sayings of old. I will utter dark sayings of old. The dark sayings of old is what? Is the history. The, the prophecies that were given to our forefathers from the time of I. Go ahead. Verse 3. Which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us. Now, this is a heavy point right here. You see, verse 3 says, which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us. So we have heard the what? The parables and the dark things of old, and we have known them. And our fathers, are because of what? Our fathers have told us. So in order for the fathers to teach, okay, to, to, to make known, the mysteries of the Most High God, the law statutes, the laws and the testimonies, the fathers would have to have known the words of the Most High God, the laws and the testimonies. That means they are well studied, they understand what is written. They are able to make it plain and give explanation and give the sense of the scriptures. Watch this. Give me the book of Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 8. He says, which we have heard and known and our fathers have told us. Who are these fathers that have told us and today, those same fathers, they are back and they are telling us again. Watch this. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 8. 
Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 8. Behold, I have set the land before you. Go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give unto them and to their seed after them. So this is the promise that the Lord made with our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and to the sons and daughters of Jacob, and to their seed after them. That would be us today. Okay? So the fathers that they have heard, you understand, the fathers that have taught us that the children are supposed to know, you understand, because we've had the fathers teach their teachers these things. We're supposed to apply those things to today. But because we did not grow up in the truth, with the laws of God, now it's time for the Most High God to do what? To send the prophets, the same fathers that are good, that have told us in the past, those same fathers are back today. Okay? Watch this. Give me the book of Ecclesiastes 44, verse 1. So like, Ecclesiastes 44, verse 1. We're going to be jumping around in this chapter. So pay attention. So like 44, verse 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 44, verse 1. Read. And our fathers that beget us. You see that thing? Those famous men is our fathers that beget us. The same fathers that we read about in Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 8. It says, let us now praise famous men. We must praise these men and our fathers that beget us. Because why? Jump down to verse 4 now. Verse 4. Verse 4. Leaders of the people by their counsels. You see that thing? And by their knowledge. So, and by their knowledge of learning. Wait. So these famous men, our fathers, guess what? It says they were leaders of the people by their counsel. They were not just, they were not famous for their good looks. No. They were not famous, Gucci. They were dark tall. They were tall. They were, they, no, no, they had muscles. And, mm -mm. It says leaders of the people by their counsel. Leaders of the people by their counsel. Watch this. Mm. I want to show you something. Give me the book of Second Samuel real quick. Because some of you, you are still into your looks, how you look. The most I don't give a damn about that. Watch this. Give me, mm, not Second Samuel, I believe it. Yeah, First Samuel. Let's see. Give me First Samuel chapter 16, okay? This is when King David was going to be made uh, chosen. Watch this. First Samuel chapter 16. Let's start at verse. Let's start at verse 6. You know what? Let's start at verse 4. You know what? Let's start at verse 1. First Samuel chapter 16. I like this. History. Let's start at verse 1. First Samuel 16, verse 1. I really like the book of Samuel. You see those two books? My favorite books. Okay. Read what you got. First Samuel 16, verse 1. First Samuel chapter 16, verse 1. And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long wilt thou mourn, wilt thou mourn for Saul? Uh -huh. Seeing I have rejected him from, re from reigning over Israel, fill thine horn with oil and go. I will send thee to Jesse, the, Bethlehem the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. So now the Lord is telling Samuel, so listen, stop mourning for Saul, Lord. Stop mourning for Saul. How long are you going to mourn for Saul? He says, fill thine horn with oil and go. I will send thee to Jesse the battle might, for I have provided me a king among his sons. So the Lord has already chosen who's going to be king over Israel. Next verse. Go ahead. And someone said, how can I go? If Saul hear it, he will, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take and hypha with thee and say, I am come to sacrifice to the Lord. You see, the most high God now is teaching Samuel to listen. If Saul is if, if Saul is gonna have a problem, because Samuel is asking the question, he says, How can I go? If Saul hear it, he will kill me. Why are we reading this for? Why is Samuel saying this? It's the same thing that Micaiah was saying. It's the same thing Micaiah was compelled to what? To speak the things that Ahab wanted to hear, not the truth. But the things that Ahab wanted to hear because the king had power to kill and to give men a command to kill or to save life. So that's the same thing that Samuel is moving in. He's moving in that same spirit because he understood the power that King Saul had because he was the king. Okay, read on. And call Jesse to the sacrifice. 
and I will show thee what thou shalt do. Read. And thou shalt anoint unto me him whom I name unto thee. So now what you are seeing here, the Lord is saying, listen, in order for Saul not and to be suspicious, did that. Order, wait, 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 wait. In order for Saul not to be suspicious, the Lord told Samuel, said, if Samuel had to ask you, take and have her with you. He says, no, I'm going to take, I'm going to perform a sacrifice so that he's not uh, suspicious of what's going on. You see, the most I attacked, you know, the most I got attacked, watch this. Go ahead. Now I want to show you something here in this book. You see, the prophet Samuel, he was a mighty prophet. The prophet Samuel was a mighty prophet. Now look at verse 4. If your forefathers, our forefathers didn't play games. When it came to this Bible, they did not, eat, they were not shaking and jiving when it comes to this Bible. They didn't play. Why? Watch this. Read verse 4. I want to show you something. Pay attention. Especially you men. Pay close attention. You're not making me say, this is not the time for it. Listen here. Read what you got. Go ahead. For Samuel chapter 16, verse 4. And Samuel did that which the Lord spake, and came to Bethlehem. And the elders of the town trembled at his coming. They did what? And said, Comest thou peaceably? Read that again. Read that again, verse 4. First Samuel chapter 16, verse 4. And Samuel did that which the Lord spake, and came to Bethlehem. And the elders of the town trembled at his coming, and said, Come and thou peaceably? So you see what they are asking? They are asking Samuel, listen, are you coming in peace? Are you coming? Because they knew when Samuel walked the scene, when he entered into, and there was some BS, Samuel was putting wicked Negroes to death with the sword, with the edge of the sword. That's what he was doing. That's why when he arrived, they asked, are you coming peaceably, Samuel? <laughs> so, this is some, this is beautiful history right here. Okay, next verse. Go ahead. And he said, Peaceably, I am come to sacrifice unto the Lord. Sanctify yourselves, sanctify yourselves, and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and called them to the sacrifice. So now, remember, he took and half and went to the Bethlehem, Jesse. Okay, Jesse, the sons of Jesse, one of them was the King David, was the son of Jesse. So now, what you are seeing here is what? A new king is going to be chosen, right? Watch this. Next verse. Read verse 6 now. Now all the sons of Jesse are going to be what? Sanctified by this sacrifice that Samuel is bringing so that a new king can be chosen instead of Saul. Okay, read verse 6 now. Read verse 6 now. Verse 6. And it came to pass when they were come that he looked on Eliab and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. So now you look at Eliab. Eliab was one of the sons of Jesse. So now Samuel is looking at him and is like, mm, surely this is the one that the Lord is choosing. Next verse, watch this. Go ahead. But the Lord said unto Samuel, look not on his countenance Stop right there. or on the height of his stature. Hold on. Because I have you. It says, you see what the Lord is telling Samuel? He says, Samuel, no, no, don't look at his countenance, okay, or on the height of his stature. You see, the most that God, he doesn't care about that thing. He says, don't look at the, on his countenance. Don't look at the height of his stature. You understand? Read on. Watch this. Because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. You see that thing? Meaning the Lord looks on your mind. Is this brother, does he have the right mindset so that he can be used in the Lord's vineyard? Is does this sister have the right mindset that she can be used in the Lord's vineyard, so on and so forth? And guess what? The fathers are able to know that thing. We can pick that thing up because fathers know they know their children that this one has got this spirit, this one she's got that spirit right there. That so on and so forth, and they must be groomed according to that spirit as that say of the law. Okay. So now he's saying, don't look at, it, don't don't judge him by on his outward appearance per se. He said, don't look at how, how, how tall he is or how short, how skinny, how fat. No, don't look at that. I said, I'm looking in the mind. How his, how his mind works, how he thinks. That's what I'm interested in. Because how you think, it must be based on how God thinks. That's how the most, that's when the Lord will be able to deal with you. Watch this. Go back, go back to uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 44, verse 4 again. Yeah, 
Ecclesiastes chapter 44, verse 4. Read. Leaders of the people by their counsels. Mm -hmm. And by their knowledge of learning, meet for the people. Wise and eloquent are their instructions. Wise and eloquent in their instructions. The instructions of the fathers. These four fathers, guess what? They instructed the people because they had what? Counsel, knowledge of learning, good for the people. They were wise, they were eloquent in their instructions. Meaning they knew exactly, they want you to do X, Y, and Z. They executed as exactly as you are given. The scripture says this, don't go outside of what is written. You understand? So jump down to verse 7 now. Verse 7. Verse 7. All these, all these were honored in their generations and were the glory of their times. So our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, you understand, Nehemiah, Nahum, Zerubbabel, they were honored in their time. You understand, they were honored in their generation, it says, and were the glory of their time. Guess what? Those same forefathers that we're reading about, they are back. And guess what they are doing? They are instructing the children. You understand? They are turning the heart of the fathers back to the children. That is what they, that's, that's the, those are the instructions that the fathers would give to their children, like we read in Psalm. Okay, jump down now to verse 14. No, verse 15. Read verse 15. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 44, verses 15. The people will tell of their wisdom and the congregation will show forth their praise. You see that thing? is that the people will tell of their wisdom. The people will tell of the wisdom of the forefathers that came before. You understand? And the congregation will show forth their praise. That's what we are doing right now. You understand? Because our forefathers that the Lord, be, the, our forefathers that beget us, the most High God, he wrote great glory by them. So that in these last days, we can learn of our forefathers and follow after their footsteps. That is what's going on right now. Okay? Now, go back. Go back to, um, go back to Psalm 78. Psalm 78, verse 3 again. The book of Psalms. Chapter 78, verses 3, mm -hmm. which we have heard and known. Our fathers have told us. And our fathers have told us. So in order for our fathers to teach us, that means our forefathers were studied men. Our forefathers were in tune with their history. They understood what happened in the past and how to make decisions today in the last day. You understand? So it says, which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us. Because they understood what? It is a law for you to teach your children God's commandments. Okay? Um, watch this. Let's deal with that. It says, which, you have, which, which we have heard and know, and our fathers have told us. Now keep going. You know what? Read verse 4. I'm going to jump back. Off. I'm going to go back to where we were then. Read verse 4 now. Verse 4. We will not hide them from... We will not hide them from their children, showing to the generations to come the praises of the Lord. Read. And his strength and his wonderful works they had done. So now what we're reading here For, says, hold on, is that we will not hide them from their children. Meaning what? Do not hide the laws of God from your children. Because them knowing God's commandments, guess what? You are guaranteeing the future. You are securing the next generation to be what? You are securing the next generation to be the generation of what? Righteousness, honor, you understand? And the fear of the Lord. They must put their trust in the Lord. So our job is not to hide these laws, statutes, and commandments, the glorious gospel of Christ from our children. They must know these things. Because the Lord will send children in, they will learn. Right now, you are children, you are coming into this group. You are still now beginning to learn who you are. So that's the same thing. That's why when you come in, we don't hide this stuff from you. We're teaching you so you know. Give me that in Sarah Ecclesiastes 33, verse 17. Sarah 33, verse 17. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 33, verses 17. 
consider that I labor not for myself only, but for all them that seek learning. That's the reason why. We will not hide them from our children. Why? Because we don't labor for ourselves only, but to all them that seek learning. Our children are going to come in, they'll be seeking to learn who they are. They are thirsty for this truth. Our job is to teach them so we can not, so the Lord can quench their thirst with the word of God. The only thing that is going to fulfill us is the word of the Most High, because that's how we move. That's our vibration. Our vibration is God's command. Anything outside of that, we don't recognize it. It corrupts the nation of Israel, corrupts our mind. Look at us now. Okay, watch this. Um, go back to Psalm 78, verse 4 again. The book of Psalms, chapter 78, verse 4. We will not hide them from their children, showing to the generations to come the praises of the Lord and his strength and his wonderful works that he had done. So our job is not to hide the laws of the Most High God from our children. Instead, the Lord is saying we must show to the generations to come the praises of the Lord. That's what Toby was saying. It is good to praise God and exalt his name. You understand? We must praise him for the wonderful things that he's done in the sight of all them, of all them that live. That's the same thing that King David is saying. You understand? And his strength and his wonderful works that he has done. When we were delivered out of Egypt, that's the wonderful things that the Lord has done for us. When and he gave us the kingdom. That's the wonderful, that's the glorious thing. So we must teach our children, they must know this thing. Okay? Next verse. Go ahead. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children. You see what he's saying? He established a testimony in Jacob. The testimony is what we read in verse 1. The law and the testimony. You understand? The covenant of the Lord and the testimonies of the Lord. Read that again, verse 5. The book of Psalms, chapter 78, verse 5. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children. So the most high God, he instructed the fathers. That's why in verse, jump up to verse 3 again. Read verse 3. Psalms 78 verse 3, which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us. And our fathers have told us, because our fathers, where did, where did they learn this from? Our fathers. The most high God is the one that gave the word. Give me that in Psalm 58, verse 11. Psalm 58, verse 11. The book of Psalms, chapter 58, verse 11. No, no, 68. 68, 68, 68, verse 11. Book of Psalms, chapter 68, verses 11. Mm -hmm. The Lord gave the word. Great was the company of those that published it. So the Lord is the one that taught our fathers. The most of God is the one that taught our forefathers the words that are written in this Bible. You understand? It says, great was the company of those that published it. Watch this. Give me the book of Isaiah 30, verse 8. Great was the company of those that published it. Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 8. The book of Isaiah chapter 30 verse 8. Mm -hmm. Now go, write it before them in a table and note it in a book that it may be for the, that it may be for the time to come forever and ever. That the time, the time to come is now. He says, now go, write it before them in a table and note it in a book. That book is the Bible. The Lord gave the word, great was the company of those that published it. So the Lord commanded Isaiah, said, listen, go, take it, write it in a book. He says, what? Uh, he says, go, write it before them in a table and note it in a book. So Isaiah wrote down what the Lord was giving to him. That's the prophet. In, more, in the book of, in the, the law, we always read the book of Exodus 24, which is still correct. This one also. But throughout the Bible, the Lord was commanding our forefathers to write the words down because he taught them to teach us, the children. You see that thing? Give me that in First Maccabees, okay? 
First Maccabees, no, Second Maccabees, chapter two. Second Maccabees, chapter two, verse twenty-three. The book of Second Maccabees, chapter two, verses twenty-three. Come on. Second Maccabees, chapter two, verses twenty-three. All these things I say, being declared by Jason of of Cyrene in five books, we will assay to abide in one volume. To abridge, to abridge means to shorten. We're gonna shorten these words, these five books in one volume. Okay, so our forefathers, the Lord gave the word. You know what? Jump up to verse 22. Read that. Read verse 22. Second Maccabees, chapter 2, verse 22. Go ahead. And recovered and recovered again the temple, renowned all the renowned all the world over, and freed the city. That's the city of Jerusalem. And upheld the that's Jerusalem. It says, and recovered again the temple renowned all the world over. So the temple that was renowned throughout the whole earth was the city of Jerusalem. So that's what is going over. And freed the city because the Greeks had taken over our city. You understand? Read on. And upheld the laws which were going down. Read. The Lord, the Lord being gracious unto them all for all with favor. No, no, read that right. Come on. The Lord being gracious unto them with all favor. He says, the Lord being gracious unto them with all favor. So what, 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 was the, the, what was the grace that the Lord bestowed upon our forefathers? He gave them the word. He put the spirit upon them to abridge the book, to essay them, to abridge them into one volume for our benefit. So the Lord gave the word. Great was the company of those that published it. Our forefathers that beget us. Those famous men. Men that were leaders of what leaders of the people by their custom. You understand? They had knowledge good for the people. Go ahead. Verse 24. Verse 23. All these things I say, being declared by Jason of Cyrene in five books, we will assay to abridge in one volume. Go ahead. For considering the infinite number and the difficulty which they find the desire to look into the narrations of the story for the variety of the matter. Meaning what different historical accounts and prophecies that they had to put together in the spirit of Christ for our benefit, it says, to look into the narrations of the story, meaning the historical stuff, the history, the parables, the dark saints. That's what they were putting together for us in these last days. Read on. We have been careful that they that will read may have delight and that they that are desirous to commit to memory might have ease mm. and and that all into whose hands it comes might have profit you see that thing so the whole point of them doing this painstakingly going through the process of doing that was to do what was so that we can profit out of the record the, the word of God that was given to them by the Most High God to teach us the children. You understand? Read. Therefore, to us that have taken upon us this painful labor of abridging it was not easy, but a matter of sweat and watching. You see that thing? The, but I made, so it wasn't easy to put the books together. Guess what? So it is today. It was painful for them to put the books together. It is painful today to go over the class, to put the classes together to teach, guess what? It's not easy. It's a painful process. Why? Because we love the people. So you, we, you're going to go through the pain to go to do what? To do what is necessary in the spirit of Christ, to put the work together to study, to put the pieces of the puzzle together in the spirit of Christ as we keep the commandments and the Lord will give the sense. We take the same sense, we give it to the people. The people have become sensible. Go ahead. Even as it is no ease unto him that prepared a banquet and seeketh the benefit of others. Read. Yet, yet for the pleasuring of many, we will undertake gladly this great pains. That's some heavy stuff right there. We will undertake gladly this great pain. Why? For the people. Because our forefathers, they love the people. That's why we must praise these famous men. So those same men back then, they are back today. Go ahead. 
leaving to the author that exact handling of every particular and laboring to follow the rules of an abridgment. Mm, go ahead. For as master, for as the master builder of a new house must care for the whole building, but he that undertake it to set it out and paint it must seek out fit things for the for the abro, adorning. for the adorning mm -hmm. for the adorning thereof. Even so, I think it is with us. Because right now we're building the house of the Most High God. Give me that in Matthew 15, verse 24. You know what? Start at Luke. Luke 14, verse 23. Luke chapter 14, verse 23. You know what? Mm, no, don't go there. Give me the book. Go back to Isaiah 30, verse 8. Isaiah, I think, that, that, I think I'll go there. Isaiah 30, verse 8. Read that again. The book of Isaiah, chapter 30, verse 8. Read. Now go write it. Now go write it before them in a table and note it in a book that it may be for the time to come forever and ever. So the same thing that our forefathers did during this time, Jason of Cyrene and the brothers, guess what they did? They had to sit down, go through great pain to put the book together for the benefit of our people, the, for the benefit of their children, which is up today. Now, what you want to notice is, is that for as a master builder of a new house must care for the whole building, the whole building is the nation of Israel. The house is talking about the house of Israel. You understand? But he that undertake it to set it out and paint it must seek out fit things for the adorning thereof. The fit things is talking about what? This fit thing is talking about the understanding of the scriptures, how to put the pieces of the puzzle together. That's what he's going into. Isaiah 30 verse 8 again. The book of Isaiah, chapter 30 verse 8. Read. Now go write it before them in a table and note it in a book that it may be for a time to come forever and ever. So now what our forefathers did in the book of the Maccabees, that is the same thing that Isaiah was doing. Guess what? Yes, they, the Lord put the spirit upon them. The Lord gave them the word. They published the book. They wrote everything down that the Musa was giving to them. For what? For our benefit. So today, our job is to go into this book to consider the pains they went through to put the, to put the work together in the spirit of Christ. So right now, we are doing the same thing for our people that are coming into land. We have to go through the pain of study because it's painful to study. You have, you have to go through the pain. You have to remember the stuff. You have to put the pieces together. You have to meditate. You have to remember. You have to put scorecards to see, mm, do I remember this system? How does it, if I bring it out, how am I going to put it together? Listen, it's not a small thing. It's a, the, one, the most like, that's why not everybody going to get this. And the most like doing this is by design. So that the most I like can set order in the nation of Israel. Watch this. Give me the book of Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 2. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 2. The book of Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse 2. Uh -huh. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables, that he may run that readeth it. So now he says, you see what he's saying? Write the vision and make it plain upon tables. Now we just discovered what the tables are. The tables is the book, the old and the new covenant. That's the table. Okay? He says, write it what? Write the vision and make it plain upon tables. Make, that's what we're doing right now. We're making it play. We're not writing, but the, well, now we're studying so we can understand how the pieces fit together so we can give you the sense. Okay, go ahead. That you may what? The book of Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse 2. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that, that he may run that readeth it. That he may run that readeth it. So now, when he says that he may run that readeth it, give me that, I think it's in Amos. Give me the book of Amos real quick. Amos chapter 8. Amos chapter 8 and verse 12. Start, start, yeah, verse 12. Let's get to the point. Amos chapter 8, verse 12. The book of Amos chapter 8, verse 12. Mm -hmm. And they shall wander from sea to sea, and from north even to the east, 
they shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord and shall not find it. You see when it says, you see in, in, in the back of when it says that they may run that Jesus is. The run is talking about what? Our people are going to be running from what? They're going to be going to different places to look for the word of the Lord, the true understanding of the Bible, and they're not going to find it. That's what the Lord is saying right here. So now, our the Lord gave the word, our forefathers, they wrote the word, they wrote everything that the Lord gave unto them, you understand, and they understood what they were writing. Some of the mysteries was not unlocked until now. Okay? Now as we are reading the scriptures, we understand, we can see, okay, it says the whole earth is going to be like an oven. Now you have to ask yourself, when the scriptures talk about in Malachi 4 verse 1, okay, but during that time, they could not have understood really what that meant until this time, until World War I, until World War II. Now we understand, oh, World War II, Hiroshima, Nagasaki, when they built the nuclear bomb. Mm. So now we know what Malachi was talking about when he was saying the whole earth is going to feel like an oven. What type of weapon can do that? A nuclear missile. So that's the sense of the scriptures. So when we go back now, go back to um, Psalm 78. Go back to Psalm 78, verse 3 again. No, verse 4. No, yeah, verse 3. Verse 3. Psalm 78, verse 3. The book of Psalms, Wait. chapter 78, verse 3. Hold on. I don't think we finished Maccabees. Could you go back there? Go back to Maccabees. I'm getting too excited. Second Maccabees, chapter 2. Chapter 2 and verse, verse 30 now. The book of Second Maccabees, chapter 2, verse 30. Mm -hmm. To stand upon every point and go over things at large and to be curious in particulars belonging to the first order of the story. So now you see what they are saying. It says to stand upon every point and go over things at large, meaning the whole book, you understand, and to be curious in particular. They had to be curious in particular, make sure that everything in its proper order, everything fits together. The words are used correctly. You know, the right words are used in different verses to bring out certain points. That's what they are going into. Go ahead. But to use bravery and avoid much laboring of the work is to be granted to him that will make an abridgment. So now he says they had to take those books and what? And shorten them. That's why it says, but to use bravery and avoid much laboring of the work is to be granted to him that will make an abridgment. Meaning what? The one that is going to shorten the books is the one that really is going to be going, have to go through a lot of pain to bring out the scriptures because right now when the scriptures are coming out the class is going out it's like yeah no you know it's it, it, it's easy to understand but to bring that to make it simple for you to understand it's pain you have to go through that stuff go ahead here here then will we begin the story only adding thus much to that which has been said that it is foolish that it is a foolish thing to make a long prologue and to be and to be short in the story itself. So now they're saying, listen, we're not going to do that. Instead, we're going to shorten it. Why? For our children in these last days. That's why we have the 66 books in the Old and New Covenant plus the, the Apocrypha. You understand? So 66 books plus the books of the Apocrypha. So what you want to see here is our forefathers in order for them to have known, to have taught, to, to teach us, they need to have sat down to study. Because who gave them the word? The Lord gave the word. And they wrote the stuff down. Watch this. Go back to Psalms now. 78. Psalm 78 and verse 3 again. The book of Psalms, chapter 78, verse 3. Which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us. In order for our fathers to teach us, you understand, they need to have been studied men. They need to have been well studied in the scriptures. Go ahead, verse 4. We will not hide them from their children, showing to the generations to come the praises of the Lord, Read. and his strength and his wonderful works that he had done. Come on. 
For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children. So the most that God commanded our fathers to teach us the children. So it is today. The same thing that happened back then is happening today. So now in order for the fathers to be able to sit down and teach their children God's commandments, his laws and his testimonies, the fathers need to be well studied in the scriptures to know where to go, to know what scripture to bring out to deal with a specific spirit or a sin or a rebellion. The fathers need to go into the scriptures to know and to know them. You understand? And to bring the scriptures out to give the sense. Watch this. Now jump up. Remember it says, um, it says that, uh, that they should make them known to their children. I mean, they should teach their children. Okay, go ahead. Read verse 6. Verse 6. That the generation to come might know them, even the children which should be born, who should arise and declare them to their children. You ever notice, you notice the most that God is about the nation. The most that God is about the nation, and that's what the Lord is trying to teach us as well. That we must think about the greater good. We must think about the whole nation. You understand? Yes, we are called individually into this truth, but it's about nation building. This is nation building time. Understand that? So when it says, for he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel. So this law was what? Was to be taught to the children so that the generations to come might know them. Even the children who should be born, who should arise and declare them to their children. So this is generational wealth of in knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. So we can rule the earth. Okay, go ahead. The reason why, the reason why we're supposed to teach our children the laws of God, this is why. Read verse 7. Verse 7. That they might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. So now that's the key right there. That they might set their hope, that they might set their hope in God. Because today our children, our children don't set their hope in God. They set their hope in what? They set their hope in um, in their toys they buy. They buy them. They set their hope in Xbox. They set their hope in PS3s and PS4s and all that. They set their hopes in Spider-Man. They set their hopes in the Superman. Okay? Transformers toys. And all. That They set their hopes in there. They set their hopes in these celebrities in there. And, and album rap. You understand? And uh, the soccer players. They set their hopes in there. Not in the Lord. And who's responsible for that? The fathers are responsible to make sure that that doesn't happen. They must set their, their hope in the Lord. Meaning their trust, their faith must be in the Lord. And when we do that, here's what's going to happen. Even that in 2nd Ezra chapter 1. 2nd Ezra 1 verse 32. 2nd Ezra 1 verse 32. No, verse 35. 2nd Ezra chapter 1 verse 35. Second book of Ezra, chapter 1, verses 35. Your houses will I give to a people that shall come, mm -hmm. which not having heard of me, yet shall believe me. Really? To, whom I have, to whom I have showed no sign, no signs, yet they shall do that I have commanded them. You see what it's saying? It says, your houses will I give to a people that shall come. We are the people that will come. Now we, we're coming in now into this truth. You understand? Which not having heard of me yet shall believe me. Why? Because we're going to set our hopes in the Lord. Who's going to make sure that happens? The fathers will make sure that that thing goes down. Okay, go ahead. Verses 36. They have seen no prophets, yet they shall call their sins to remembrance and acknowledge them. They have not seen the prophets. We didn't see the prophets with our own eyes. We didn't see Jonah being eaten by the fish. We didn't see Christ walk on water. We didn't see that. We didn't see Moses part the Red Sea. But it says, yet they shall call their sins to remembrance and acknowledge them. That is what's going on right now. Go ahead. I take to, I take to witness the grace of the people to come, whose little ones rejoice in gladness. With what? And though they... Is that whose what? Whose little... Whose little ones rejoice in gladness. You see that thing? Whose little ones rejoice in gladness. The little ones is what? Remember it says that they may set their hope in God. Who's, gonna, who's supposed to set their hope in God? The little ones. 
Who's supposed to make sure that that happens? The fathers are supposed to make sure that that thing goes down. That's why today we've got children in the camp, like young children. Why? Because it says, whose little ones rejoice in gladness. This is Bible prophecy right here, unfolding right before our eyes. Go ahead. And though they have not seen me with bodily eyes, yet in spirit they believe the things that I say. That's some heavy stuff right there. Although these little ones have not seen the most high God or the prophets with bodily eyes, he says, yet in spirit they shall believe the thing that I say. Because in their spirit they know who they are. They are just waiting for the prophets to come to activate them with the word of the most high. That is what we are doing. Because when we was in Soweto, I saw the little ones rejoicing at what at hearing the word of the most high. Some of the boys were in there, some of the, 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 the sons, young sons, you understand, four years old, five, maybe some six. They were sitting down on the floor, listening. That was a glorious thing right there. That's a beautiful thing right there. Why? Because it's showing you what this we this is Bible prophecy. You understand? We're activating their spirit so they can understand. Oh, that's me right there. That's talking of that's talking to me right there. Watch this. Now go back, go back to Psalm 78. Psalm 78, verse 7 again. The book of Psalms, chapter 78, verse 7. Mm -hmm. That they might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. But keep his commandments. So our job is to make sure that you brothers and sisters coming in, you must set your hope in the Lord. You must not set your hope in how you feel. Don't set your hope in how you are spoken to. The reason why sometimes you are spoken, you are spoken to in a harsh way is what? He's trying to pull you out of the fire because we know the dangers of not going in the straight and narrow path that the Lord has set out for us. Watch this. Now, the father, this is the, this is the father, the job, this is the responsibility of the father. The father is supposed to do this. That's what's going on right now. Watch this. Give me that in Deuteronomy 32 verse 7. Deuteronomy 32 verse 7. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 7. Mm -hmm. Remember the days of old. Consider the years of many generations. Ask thy father and he will show thee. Thy elders and they will tell thee. You see that thing? So this is talking about Moses is teaching us that in the last days, the elders, the fathers will be back. And the fathers will declare things that they will declare parables and dark sayings of old to the children so that the children set their hope in the Lord. We are living in those times right now. Watch this. Now, give me the book of Genesis, chapter 17, verse 1. Remember, it says, the fathers will make known the laws of God to their children. That means the fathers themselves were men of counsel. They received counsel from the Lord and they followed the counsel. They applied. They didn't back up. They were not rebellious. They applied what was commanded of them because our forefathers, they saw the bigger picture. Now watch this. Give that in Genesis 17 verse 1. The book of Genesis chapter 17 verse 1. Mm -hmm. And when Abraham was 90 years old, Go and ahead. when Abraham was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto him, I am the almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. So now imagine if the Lord, if, the, if, if Abraham was rebellious, where would be? Where were we going to be? Just think about that thing. The Lord appeared unto Abraham and said, listen, walk before me and be perfect before me. Go ahead. The book of Genesis, chapter 17, verse 2. And I will make my covenant between me and thee, and will multiply thee exceedingly. So now the Lord is adding to the promise. Say, listen, what I want you to do is the first thing I want you to do. I want you to walk before me and be perfect. Once you walk before me in the way in which I'm going to command you and be perfect before my eyes, then I'm going to do this to you. He says, and I will make my covenant between me and thee, and will future multiply the exceedingly. So first verse one is given the responsibility. Verse two is given the reward for what? For handling that business. Go ahead. Verse three. And Abraham fell on his face and God talked to him saying, right. as for me, behold, my covenant is with thee and thou shalt be a father of many nations. So now watch this. 
first he's given, he says, what, listen, I'm want you, this, is the, this is what I want you to do. This is the task I'm giving to you. Once you accomplish this task, this is what's going to happen. I'm going to what? I'm going to make my agreement with you. I'm going to, I'm going to make an agreement with you. And, you, and I'm, I'm going to multiply you exceedingly. But here's the next part. Now Abraham is given a responsibility. Okay? He says, as for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. So now think about it. He says, you are going to be a father. What is the job of a father? Go back to Psalm 78 verse 5. He says, you are going to be a father of many nations. Now you must ask yourself, what is the responsibility of a father? We're about to read about it right now. Again, Psalm 78 verse 5. The book of Psalms, chapter 78, verse 5. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children. That's what we're reading here. Abraham now is understanding this thing. Listen, for me to walk before the Lord and be perfect, that means I'm not, this is not just for me, but it's for the nations that will come out of me, which I'm going to be a father of. And in order for me to be a good father to the nation, that the Lord is speaking to me about, I must be responsible. I must be well learned. I must be obedient to what the Lord is commanding me to do. So if our forefathers, if Abraham was a rebellious forefather, guess what? Where would we, where, where were we going to be? Just think about that thing. Okay, go back to Genesis 17, verse 5. Now. The book of Genesis, chapter 17, verse 5. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abra Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham. Mm -hmm. For a father of many nations have I made thee. So now the Lord is telling Abraham, listen, you're going to be a father of many nations. Watch this. Go ahead. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee, and thy seed after thee. So now this is the promise right here. So as a father, listen, this is what you need to understand about the job that I'm going to give unto you to be a father of these nations that are going to come out of you. You understand? It says what? It says, I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. So you need to understand that's a heavy responsibility that has been given to our forefathers. He has been given a heavy responsibility to be responsible for the generations that are going to come after him. Isaac, Jacob, the 12 tribes, that which is what, which goes to us today. So now you really need to think about it and say, I mean, imagine Abraham standing there. He's looking at the people that the Lord was talking to him about. A multitude that no man could number. And Abraham is a father of those nations. That's some heavy stuff. So Abraham was a great father. You understand? He knew law, order, and judgment. We need to understand that thing. Next verse. Verse 9. Come on. Verse 8. And I will give unto thee, and to thy seed after thee, the land wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan, for an everlasting possession. And I will be their God. Now, you see, you see what he's saying there? It says, all the land of Canaan, because the land of Canaan was given to us to possess. We possessed it under Moses. We took it under Joshua. David and them, they, they put, they destroyed the Canaanites. They kicked them out of the land, and we conquered, and we ruled them all. So, this is the promise that will be given to the 12 tribes of Israel. But the point is, our forefather Abraham, he understood his responsibility as a father. You understand? He understood that thing. That's why, read on, read verse 9 now. Verses 9. Mm -hmm. And God said unto Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant there, therefore, thou and thy seed after thee in their generations. Read. This is my covenant which ye shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee. Every man child among you shall be circumcised. Now, so this is the covenant now. This is the covenant of circumcision. Okay? The circumcision that was, the covenant of circumcision that the Lord made with Abraham, it was not circumcision first, 
No, but he was given Abraham a great faith. And then he sealed his faith with circumcision. Okay, go ahead. And ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall be a token of the covenant betwixt me and you. Read. And he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you. Every man child in your generations, he that is born in the house or bought with money or any stranger which is not of thy seed, he that is born in thy house and he that, that is bought with thy money must needs be circumcised. Go ahead. And my covenant shall be your flesh shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. So now this covenant of circumcision was an everlasting covenant. That's why we still got to circumcise today. The men. The men still are supposed to chop off their foreskin. Okay, go ahead. Verse 14. And the uncircumcised man child whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised, that soul shall be cut off from his people. He had broken my covenant. So this is the covenant that the Lord made with Abraham. And the co that covenant will what will go over the seed that will come out of Abraham and to the, 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 the next generations that are coming. So that we must be taught that the Lord made a covenant with our forefather Abraham and he didn't break that covenant. You understand? So today we're still benefiting, we're still what? We're still, and we're still due the promises that was made of the covenant that we are reading. You understand? Watch this. Jump down to verse 19 now. The book of Genesis chapter 17, verse 19. And God said, Sarah thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac. And I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with its seed after him. So Abraham, the covenant that the Lord made with Abraham will go to his seed, which is Isaac, and to Isaac's seed, you understand, which is Jacob, and Jacob's seed, which is the 12 sons of Jacob, which is the 12 tribes. So now this covenant right here, remember, this covenant was only given to our forefather Abraham because our forefather Abraham, what did he do? He kept the commandment of the Most High. Our forefather Abraham was very, was faithful. He had great faith. And because of his faith and his act, to prove that he was faithful, guess what? That's why today we are Jew. The mercy that was promised to our forefather Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay? Because our forefathers, they were, what? They were men of counsel. They were men of honor. Watch this. Give me, um, give me the book of Genesis chapter 18, verse 18. Remember now, uh, what we're reading in Genesis 17, verse 19, the Lord, he promised Abraham that I'm going to make you a father of many nations. That's a heavy responsibility to be a father. We read that responsibility in Psalm 38, verse 5. Furthermore, guess what? He says, your son that will come up out of you, you understand, which, whose name is going to be Isaac, he also I'm going to pass the covenant I've given to you unto him. He also will be a father, and he will carry the same responsibility to teach to her his son. That's why it says that the generation to come might know them. Even the children who should be born, who should arise and declare them to their children in Psalm 78, verse 6. Watch this. Genesis 18, verse 18. Read that. The book of Genesis, chapter 18, verse 18. Seeing that Abraham shall surely, come, shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. So those nations that will be blessed in him is the 12 tribes of Israel. Go ahead. For I know him that he will command his children and his household after him. Read. And they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he had spoken of him. So now what you are seeing here says, if the Lord is saying, for I know him. How does he know him? We just read in Genesis 17 verse 1 down. Genesis 17 verse 1 down, it tells you how the Lord knew. Because when Abraham was commanded to what? To circumcise every male child in his house, he did it. He didn't waste time. Okay, when he heard it, he did it. So that's why it says, for I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him. 
and they, his household, shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment. So now watch this. Give me Genesis 21 verse 20, 21 verse 1. Come on, Genesis 21 verse 1. One. And the Lord visited Sarah, and as he had said, and the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. Read. For Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age, at the set time of which God had spoken to him. Read. And Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him, whom Sarah paid to him, Isaac. So now, you notice, this is the most high the genius. You see the way this thing is written? Read verse 3 again. Watch this. The book of Genesis, chapter 21, verse 3. And Abraham called the name of his son, that was born unto him, whom Sarah paid to him, Isaac. You see what it says? And Abraham called the name of his son, that was born unto him, whom Sarah paid to him, Isaac. So the reason why it's been mentioned here, the most that God is making sure that today in these last days, because guess what? He knew he knew that Ishmael is going to revolt, and exactly, that's exactly what Ishmael did. That's why today they say, no, Ishmael is the chosen. Jacob, uh, Isaac is not. In the Christian church, they say Esau is the chosen and Jacob is not. That's why he is mentioning whom Sarah bear to him, Isaac. Because now, now you have to ask yourself, okay, so the chosen seed that came out of Abraham, who was the mother? Sarah was the mother, not her guy. You see that thing? The most is a genius. The way the Bible is written, you see, these are subtleties right here. Whom Sarah bear to him, Isaac. He says, I'm going to make you, well, hold on, watch this. Let me just touch on that. Genesis 17, verse 15, read that. The book of Genesis, chapter 17, verses 15. And God said unto Abraham, As for Sarai, thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall her name be. Read. And I will bless her and give thee a son also of her. Yea, I will bless her. And she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be of her. You see what it's saying? It says, and she, Sarah, whose name was changed from Sarai to Sarah. It says, she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be of her. Now you need to ask yourself, she shall be a mother of nations. Abraham is the father of many nations. So which nations came out of Abraham that our foremother Sarah gave birth to? It's Isaac. This is the, the, the reason why this is written the way that it's written is so that we, the children today, as we go over the scriptures, we can pick these things up and say, hmm, oh, now I understand now. The subtleties in what is written. Go back, Genesis 21, verse 3 again. The book of Genesis, chapter 21, verse 3. And Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him, whom Sarah bare unto him, Isaac. Go ahead. And Abraham circumcised his son, Isaac, being eight days old, as God had commanded him. You see that thing? So Abraham, what is he doing? He's applying the covenant that the Lord made with him in Genesis 17. He's applying that law. Why? Because Abraham, he... Feared the Lord. He applied what was written. Whatever Abraham, the Lord commanded him, he did it. He didn't question it. You understand? Because he understood the responsibility that he has as a father. He understood that. That's why the Lord says, For I know him that he's going to do this. I'll give an example. Remember, Isaac was born after Ishmael. But I want to show you something. This is before Ishmael was born. I mean, Isaac was born. Give me Genesis chapter 17 and verse 23. Because the Lord is saying, for I know him. He knows him. Because the Abraham developed a reputation with the Lord. Genesis 17 verse 23. Watch this. 
the book of Genesis chapter 17, verse 23. And, a and Abraham took Ishmael his son, and all that were born in his house, and all that were bought with his money, every male among the men of Abraham's house, and circumcised the flesh of their foreskin in the selfsame day, as God had said unto him. Meaning the same day that he was commanded to give. That's why it says, I know him. You see what I'm saying? It says, in the self same day as God command, as God had said unto him, Abraham did it. So he said, he circumcised the first king of his, of his son Ishmael, okay, and all that were born in his house. Meaning what? He says, remember, go back to Genesis 18, verse 19. The book of Genesis chapter 18, verse 19. For I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he had spoken of him. So now, now what we're reading here says, he says, for I know him. How does he know? We just read it. He says, the self same day as God, as God had said unto him, Abraham did. He circumcised everybody in his house. Every male was chopped with a blade. Okay? Why? Because that's what the Lord commanded every male. That was that's what the Lord commanded Abraham to do. So Abraham, when, when he was commanded, he told he, everybody in the house had to follow that command. He set his house in order. That's what a father does. When a father gives us instruction, children must obey. Why? Because that's part of the command. You see how the obedience of Abraham, now we are eligible to receive the kingdom if we endure until the end. Okay? Watch this. Give me Give me Genesis 26, verse 1. Before you go to Genesis 26, give me Genesis 22. Yeah, Genesis 22, let's start at verse 1. The book of Genesis, chapter 22, verse 1. Uh -huh. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here am I. Read. Here, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. Read. And Abraham rose up early in the morning, and settled his ass, and took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son, and clave the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went unto the place of which God had told him. So now what you notice here is the Abraham is following command. He's like, take your son and go and sacrifice him. He's not questioning nothing. He's just doing it as he is commanded. That's why says, the Lord says, for I know this man. I know Abraham. You understand? He's not going to twitch like a robot. He's going to get it done. Go ahead. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. Mm -hmm. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. Mm -hmm. And Abraham took, took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they went both of them together. So now, and Isaac spake that, so now in verse 6, now watch this. It says, And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering, okay, and laid it upon Isaac his son, and took the fire in his hand and the knife, and they went both of them together. So now Isaac is walking, Abraham is walking with his son Isaac. Remember, it says, You shall, you shall what? You shall teach, make them known to their children. Hmm, that's a topic for another day. Go ahead. The book of Genesis, chapter 22, verse 7. Mm -hmm. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father, and he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold, the fire, the wood, the fire and the wood. But where is the lamb for a burnt offering? So now Isaac has picked up that this is, we don't have the lamb for the burnt offering. We don't have the sacrificial lamb that we're going to use for the offering. He's asking the question, but watch this. Go ahead, verse 8. And Abraham said, My son, God will 
provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. So now I want you to notice something. Notice something here in verse 8. It says, And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. He says, God is going to provide the lamb, he's going to provide himself a lamb for a bed, or this is a heavy bed, heavy, heavy stuff right here. So they went both of them together. But I wanna, what I want to show you here is, you see what Abraham is teaching his son Isaac? He's teaching him faith. He's teaching, him to, he's teaching Isaac to have faith. He says, God will provide himself a lamb for a bed offering. So they went both of them together. So he was teaching his son faith. Go back to Psalm 78. Read Psalm 78, verse 7. The book of Psalms, chapter 78, verse 7, that they might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. You see that thing? So Abraham was teaching our, was teaching our grandfather Isaac to have faith. God will provide for himself a land. Okay? So that's faith right there. So now they have to go, still continue on the mission. The mission is not aborted. The mission is a go. They are still going on, on the mission. Now, Isaac asked the question because he noticed something odd. Where is the lamb? He said, don't worry, the Lord will provide this thing. So it is today. There's certain things that you're not going to understand in this truth yet because it's not time. You, are, you still, need to, still need the milk. Over time, when, when, the, when it's time, you will understand those things. But right now, just have faith to understand that the milk is how you're going to grow, as it says in 1 Peter 2 verse 2. You stick to that. You read the five books. You understand. Read the laws. Read the prophets. Read in the laws as well. That's going to build you up. In time, the Lord will open that spirit up. That's faith. That's why I tell you, brothers, read the ancestors. Read the, read the, the laws. Understand what's going on in the law. Because that's the milk. That's your foundation. That is a sure foundation right there. Okay? Um, give me Genesis 26 verse 1. Now, at this point, Isaac is older now, okay? Isaac is older. Now the Lord is making a covenant with him now. Watch this. Genesis 26, verse 1. The book of Genesis, chapter 26, verse 1. And there was a famine in the land besides the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went unto Abimelech, king of the Philistines, unto Gerar. Really? And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down into go not down into Egypt, dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. So now the Lord is giving Isaac counsel on what to do. Go ahead. So John in this land, and I will be with thee and will bless thee, for unto thee and unto thy seed I will give all these countries. And I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father. You see that thing? The, the now, the same promise that was given to the great grandfather is given to our grandfather now. The Lord is saying, listen, the same promise I gave to your father, I'm going to give it to you as well. Okay, watch this. Keep going. Verse 4. And I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven. And will give unto the seed all these countries, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. It says, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. So he is also telling, listen, you are going to you are you, you are going to be a father, Isaac. You understand? You are you are going to be a father, Isaac, and your job is to be is to be a good father to the children that are gonna come out of you. Which children came out of uh, Isaac? It was just one. Okay, that was Isaac. I mean, that was uh, out of Isaac. No, that was Jacob and Esau. Okay, out of Isaac came Jacob and Esau. So now he's also being given the responsibility of being a father. You understand? Read on, verse 5. Verse 5. Because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. So that's the reason why we are now due for the kingdom. We, we, we are what? 
we are we are all one to the same we are, we are we are the we are heirs to the promise that was promised to our forefather Abraham. Like you read in Galatians 3, you understand the last verse. He says, We are heirs to the promise that was given to our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So now watch this. Abraham kept the commandments, Abraham walked perfect. So that's why now he was able to do what? To to the Lord was able to put upon him that which he put on, on our forefather Abraham. Now watch this. Listen to what. Now this is after Jacob and Esau was born already. Now watch this. Genesis 28 verse 1. Now this is our forefather Isaac giving instructions to his son. Listen now. 28 verse 1. The book of Genesis chapter 28 verse 1. And Isaac called Jacob and blessed him and charged him and said unto him, Thou shalt not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan. Now that's a command right there. That's a command right there. So listen. He's telling Jacob, listen, and he blessed Jacob and charged him. Meaning he was commanded and warned and said, and thou shalt not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan. Don't marry this dusty Hamite. He says, I don't want you anywhere near this Hamite. Stay away from him. That's what he's telling you because why? Give me that in Deuteronomy chapter 7, real quick. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 3. The book of Deuteronomy. Chapter 7, verse 3. You know Neither what? shall thou make... Uh, start at verse 1. Read verse 1. We're going to jump. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verse 1. When the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land, whether thou goest to possess it, and hath cast out many nations before thee, the Hittites, and the Gagashites, and the Amorites, and the Canaanites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than thou. So now the Canaanites is part of this list. So he's telling him, listen, don't marry the daughters of Canaan. Why? Jump down to verse 3. Go ahead. Verse 3. Neither shalt thou make marriage with them. Thy daughter, thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughter thou shalt, shalt thou take unto thy son. So now is, this is the law. This is the law of interracial marriage, meaning what? The most High God is against interracial marriages. So now what we're reading here is, thou shalt not, it says, when you go and possess the lands and be of these nations, don't make marriages with them. So now let's go back to Genesis 28, verse 1 again. The book of Genesis, chapter 28, verse 1. And Isaac called Jacob and blessed him and charged him and said unto him, Thou shalt not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan. You see that thing? Why? Because of what we read in Deuteronomy chapter 7. Go ahead. Arise, go to Paran Aram, to the house of Bethuel, thy mother's father, thy mother's father, and take thee a wife from thence, of the daughters of Leban, thy mother's brother. So now, what you want to notice here is, you see when, when you see this, I know some of you that have already read Genesis 28, I think I've went over this. Okay? Because what you are seeing here, it says, it says, go to Paranaram, to the house of Bethuel, thy mother's father, and take thee a wife from them of the daughters of Laban, thy mother's brother. But according to the law, Leviticus 18, you're not supposed to do that. Because when you look at this, you are just thinking, no, it's just, you know, my, my mother's father, my mother's father's children. You can't be having sex with them. You can't marry them. Okay? This is going into the kindreds and all that. Give that in 1 Timothy 5 and 1 real quick. 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 1. Just to clarify what we are reading here when it, what, when it says, thy mother's father, thy mother's brother, and so forth. 1 Timothy 5 and 1. First book of Timothy, chapter 5, verses 1. Rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father, and the younger men as brethren. You see that thing? So the elders are fathers. The younger men are as brethren. Okay, read on, verse 2. The elder women as mothers, the younger as sisters, with all purity. That's simple. 
You see what he's saying? The elder women as mothers, the younger as sisters with all purity. Now let's go back. Genesis 28 verse 2. The book of Genesis chapter 28 verse 2. Arise, go to Paran Aram, to the house of Bethuel, thy mother's father, and take, take thee a wife from thence of the daughters of Laban, thy mother's brother. So now what you are seeing here is what? Is the, the, when it says thy, thy mother's father, okay, and thy mother's brother, this is a term of endearment, okay? That's my brother right there. That's my sister right there. Yeah, that's, that's, what, that's what we are doing today. Is what we are doing. But Christianity will use this to say, you see, I can marry my uncle's daughter. The hell is this? Give me that in Genesis 18. Genesis chapter 18 and verse... Uh, Read verse 12. Genesis 18. You know what? Let's start at verse, verse 11. Genesis 18, verse 11. The book of Genesis, chapter 18, verse 11. Now Abraham and Sarah no, no. were old. No, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Leviticus, Leviticus. Leviticus 18. Leviticus 18, verse 11. The book of Leviticus, chapter 18, verses 11. Uh -huh. The nakedness of thy father's wife, of thy father's wife, daughter, begotten no, no. of thy father. Hold on. The nakedness of thy father's wife's daughter, your father's wife's daughter. Okay, it says you must not go anywhere near them. Read that part again. The book of Leviticus, chapter 18, verse 11. The nakedness of thy father's wife's daughter, begotten of thy father, she is thy sister. Thou shalt not uncover her nakedness. Because that's some nasty stuff. Go ahead. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy father's sister. That's your she aunt. Is thy... That's your aunt. Go ahead. She is thy father's near kinswoman. You see that thing? Is Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy father's sister. She is thy father's near kinswoman. Watch this. Go ahead. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy mother's sister, for she is thy mother's near kinswoman. Uh -huh. Read on. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy father's brother. Thou shalt not approach to his wife. She is thine aunt. So now, I mean, we're reading the list of laws here, which are abominations in the sight of the Most High. But when you read Genesis 28, verse 2, now everybody got confused. That's why you need the law to understand what's going on. Okay, go ahead. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy daughter-in-law. No, she no. is thy son's wife. Oh, yes, yes. Read on. The book of Genesis, the book of Leviticus, chapter 18, verse 15. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy daughter-in-law. She is thy son's wife. Thou shalt not uncover her nakedness. You see, that's your daughter-in-law right there. Go ahead. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy brother's wife. It is thy brother's nakedness. So now what I'm showing you here is that this is the law. So when you go to Genesis 28 verse 2, don't, not, don't nobody want, I don't want to see nobody confused now with this. Okay, Genesis 28 verse 2. The book of Genesis, chapter 28, verse 2. Arise, go to Padan Aram, to the house of Petuel, thy mother's father, and take thee a wife from thence of the daughters of Laban, thy mother's brother. Go ahead. And God Almighty bless thee and make thee fruitful and multiply thee, that thou mayest be a multitude of people. That, you see what it's saying? It says thou mayest be a multitude of people. He's talking to Isaac now. Go ahead. No, no. Isaac is talking to his son, Jacob. Go ahead. And give thee a blessing of Abraham to thee and to thy seed with thee. You see that? that thou and to thy seed with thee. And to thy seed. Who's that? 
We took about the 12 tribes. Go ahead. That thou mayest inherit the land wherein thou art a stranger, which God gave unto Abraham. Read. And Isaac sent away Jacob, and he went to Padan Aram, unto Leban, son of Bethuel, the Syrian, the brother of Rebekah, Jacob's and Esau's mother. Go ahead, come on. When Esau saw that Isaac had blessed Jacob and sent him away to Padan Aram to take him a wife from thence, and that as he blessed him, he gave him a charge, saying, Thou shalt not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan. <laughs> He's telling you, listen, he said, listen, I know I told you before, I'm going to tell you again. Do not, please don't bring shame into my house. That's what he's saying right there. Thou shalt not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan. Stay away from these Hamites. Okay, go ahead. And that Jacob obeyed his father and his mother and was gone to Padan Aram. So what did Jacob do? Read that again, verse 7. The book of Genesis chapter 28, verse 7. And Jacob obeyed his fathers, his father and his mother, and was gone to Padan Aram. Now give me the book of Ephesians chapter 6. Give me Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 2. Start at verse 1. Ephesians 6 and 1. The book of Ephesians chapter 6 verse 1. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. For this is right. He says, obey your parents in the Lord. Remember in Genesis 28 verse 1, it says, don't marry the daughters of Canaan. What does it mean in the Lord? We read in Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 1 and 3, why that he's not supposed to do that as Isaac, his father, commanded him because it's against the Lord to marry outside of your race. Okay? Read on verse 2. Honor thy father and mother which is the first commandment with promise. Read. That it may be, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayst live long on the earth. So the promise is what? Is everlasting, is everlasting life, to live forever on the earth. That's part of the requirement of what? You must honor your father and your mother. Okay? Now let's go back. Genesis 28, verse 7 again. The book of Genesis, chapter 28, verse 7. Mm -hmm. And that Jacob obeyed his father and his mother and was gone to Padan Haram. So now Jacob obeyed his father and his mother. And guess what? One of the instructions that a father gives to his son is what? Jump up to verse 6. The book of Genesis chapter 28 verse 6. When Esau saw that Isaac had blessed Jacob and sent him away you to Padan Aram. Uh, read verse 2. We're going to read 2 and 6 together. The book of Genesis chapter 28 verse 2. Arise, go to Padan Aram, to the house of Bethuel, thy mother's father, and take thee a wife from thence, of the daughters of Laban, thy mother's brother. So now Isaac is telling Jacob his son, listen, go and look for yourself. Go and take yourself a wife now. You understand? You are older now. You must go and get a wife. You understand? He says, go and take thee a wife from thence, of the daughters of Laban, thy mother's brother. So jump down to verse 6 now. The book of Genesis chapter 28 verse 6. When Esau saw that Isaac had blessed Jacob, and sent him away to Padan Aram to take him a wife from thence. And that as he blessed him, he gave him a charge, saying, Thou shalt not take a wife, thou shalt not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan. So one of the one of the instructions that a father gives to his son is to do what? That you must, as a man, you must get married. You understand? You must get married. That's what Tobit said. Give me that in Tobit 1 verse 9. I really like this verse. Okay, because Tobit is saying some heavy stuff here. Tobit chapter 1. Mm -hmm. Tobit 1 verse 9. Watch this. The book of Tobit chapter 1 verse 9. Furthermore, when I was come to the age of a man, I married Anna of mine own kin. Her I beget Tobias. So now what you are seeing here is that 
Toby, he got many. So for him to become a man, that's what he needs. That's one of the requirements of being a man. You do what? He got married and he became Tobias. So what you are reading is I Jacob, I mean Isaac is commanding his son Jacob to go and what? To man up and go and take a wife. So he can have some responsibilities. Why? Because he knows of the, the, the promises that was made to him and the promises that was made to his grandfather that you're going to be a father of many nations. So the same promise that was given to Abraham was passed down to Isaac. Now it needs to be passed down to Jacob. For that promise to take place, Jacob needs to go and look for a wife. And Jacob obeyed. You see that thing? Because our prophet Abraham, they are about the nation. They are about nation building. Isaac, the same. They are about nation building. You see that thing? This is some beautiful stuff coming out here. Okay, watch this. Give me, um, let me see. Give me the book of Genesis 49 real quick. Give me Genesis 49 verse 1. Come on, Genesis 49 verse 1. The book of Genesis chapter 49 verse 1. And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together that I may tell you that we shall befall you in the last days. So now Moses is writing this because Moses wasn't here. So now the Lord is showing Jacob, the Lord is showing Moses what Jacob said to his son before he died. Okay? Moses, he, the Lord showed Moses a lot of stuff. One of those things that he showed him, he showed him, he showed him when Jacob was, he gathered his sons together to tell them what will befall us in the last days. So that's the father's and that's the father's responsibility to see, to tell the sons what is going to happen to them. You understand in the latter end of their years. Read that again, verse one. The book of Genesis, chapter forty-nine, verse one. And Jacob called unto his sons and said, "Gather yourselves together, that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days." So now this is prophecy. Jacob is prophesying. He is in the spirit of prophecy. What will befall you in the last days? The last days. Go ahead. Gather yourselves together, and hear ye, sons of Jacob, and hearken unto Israel your father. And listen unto Israel your father. So he's gathering the sons together, because remember, what we go back to Psalm 78, verse, verse 5 again. The book of Psalms, chapter 78, verse 5. Mm -hmm. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children. Now let's go back to Genesis 49 now. Verse 2 again. The book of Genesis chapter 49 verse 2. Mm -hmm. Gather yourselves together and hear ye sons of Jacob and hearken unto Israel your father. So now Jacob is going to tell his sons what's going to happen to them in the last days. Now, let's read verse, read verse 3. Verse 3. Reuben, thou art my firstborn, my might, and the beginning of my strength, the excellency of dignity, and the excellency of power. So Reuben is the Seminole Indians of today. Reuben, the Seminole Indians. So it says, Reuben, thou art my firstborn, my might, Okay, the beginning of my strength, the excellency of dignity and the excellency of power. See, because the tribe of Reuben, what was they doing? The tribe of Reuben, when it comes to royalty and all of that, they kept themselves in that royal estate, even when they were in the Americas. You understand? In South America. But what you want to see is uh, um, the excellency of dignity and the excellency of power. Because what was happening is there was a man called Andrew Jackson. He was a U.S. Um, he was a, he was a military general in the U.S. Cavalry. So what they did was um, they wanted they they got the Negroes. They they wanted the Seminole Indians to enslave the Negroes, and so the Seminole Indians made a deal with the with with the United with, with the with the U.S. Cavalry, the the military under Andrew Jackson. So what happened was that they agreed to say, okay, yes, we'll enslave them. But what did they do? What was their crime? So after they, they made a false deed, uh, they, made, they made a false treaty with, 
with Andrew Jackson. As soon as he left, they made the Negro king. You understand? They made them kings and princes and gave them the choice of their women in the community of the Seminole Indians, the tribe of Reuben. So they still kept that dignity because the white man wanted the Seminole Indians to enslave their own brothers. The, the Seminole Indians refused to do that thing. Go ahead, verse 4. The book of Genesis chapter 49, verse 4. Unstable as water, thou shalt not excel, because thou wentest up to thy father's bed, then defilest thou it. He went up to my couch. So what Reuben is, Jacob is telling Reuben, he said, listen, you are unstable as water. You are, because they've been moving from place to place. You understand? During the, the, during the American Civil War, it says, unstable as water, thou shalt not excel, because thou wentest up to, my, to thy father's bed, then defilest thou it, he went up to my couch. Meaning what? He slept with his father's concubine. That's what Reuben did. That's why he says, thou shalt not excel. Okay, because even in the last days, they were unable to overcome a rejection and its military troops. They couldn't win over them. Okay, they were subdued. Now, let's read verse 5. I'm just, I'm not going to read everything. I just want to show you the, the responsibility of a father because guess what? The reason why I'm reading this is because a father can pick up certain spirits in their sons and daughters, in their children. Next verse. Verse 5. Simeon and Levi. A brethren, instruments of cruelty are in the are in their habitations. So he now oh my. he's saying Simeon and Levi. Okay. Simeon, that's the Dominican, the Dominicans of today. Dominican, the Dominicans of today. Levi, that's the so-called Haitians of today. He says, instruments of cruelty are in their habitations. Because what do they do? They defy um, Jacob's instruction after that Hamite raped our, our sister Dina. So they went and they killed them all and circumcised they circumcised them. And then while they were still in pain, they came, they chopped them, they killed them. Okay. That's why it says instruments of cruel of cruelty are in their habitation. Read on. Oh my soul, come not thou into their secret and to their assembly. Mine honor be not thou united. For in their anger they slew a man, and in their self, in their self will, they dig down a wall. So what you are seeing here is Jacob is telling is telling Simeon and Levi, say, listen, they must not be united. He says, be not thou united, because Levi and Simeon they live on the same island, but they are divided. They don't get along. They fight in the island of Espanol. On one side is the Dominicans. They speak Spanish. They conquered by the Spain. The conquistadors. On the other side, you've got the, the so-called Haitians. They speak French. They were conquered by France. So they divided them both in language and culture, and they hate and despise one another. That's what we're reading here. Be not thou united, for in their anger they slew a man, and in their self will they dig down a wall. Read on, verse 7. First be their anger, for it was fierce, and their wrath, for it was cruel. I will divide them in Jacob and scatter them in Israel. You see that thing? That's what would happen in the last days. Based on what? Based on their behavior and conduct, this is what would identify who the, the, uh, the type of Simeon is and the type of Levi is. So because Le when, Levi and, when Levi and Simeon get together, listen, they never come together for good. So the Lord said, I'm going to separate you. I'm going to separate you. That's why in Haiti they practice guru. On the other side, in the Dominican Republic, they practice Santaria, okay, Bruharia, which is just another form of good. You understand? The same thing. But guess what? The Lord says, I'm going to divide you. You are going to be divided. What am I bring, why am I bringing this up? Watch this. Give me the book of 1 Maccabees, okay? 1 Maccabees chapter 2. 1 Maccabees chapter 2 and verse... First Maccabees 2, verse 51. First Maccabees chapter 2, verse 51. Call to remembrance what acts our fathers did in their time. 
so shall ye receive great honor and an everlasting name. That everlasting name is going to come from what we are, we are going to read next. Jump down to verse 53, read verse 54. We're going to read that. First Maccabees chapter 2, verse 64. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, ye my sons, be valiant and shew yourselves men in the behalf of the law, for by it shall ye obtain glory. So now he's telling them, say, listen, you must be valiant, be courageous, and show yourselves men in the behalf of the law, for by it ye shall obtain glory. So that glory and the everlasting name is going to come is going to come to us when we do what? When we show ourselves men on the behalf of the law, meaning we stand for the laws of this Bible. That's when we become men. That's when we sisters become women. Okay, go ahead. And behold, I know that your brother Simeon is a man of counsel. Give ear unto him always. He shall be a father unto you. So what we're reading here, see, this is Marathias now. He's about to die. So he's telling his son, he says, listen, I know your brother Simon is a man of counsel. We just had the day of Simon. That's Simon right there. He says, give ear unto him always. He shall be a father unto you. Now read the next part of that verse. Or the next, read the next verse. Watch this. Verse 66. As for Judas Maccabees, he had been mighty and strong, even from his youth up. Let him be your captain and fight the battle of the people. You see that thing? So Marathias was able to recognize the spirit in Judah Maccabee. So listen, let him be your captain, okay? And fight the battle of the people. Simon is the, is the wise one. Judas was the master. So what we're reading here is Marathias was able to identify the certain spirit in the sun. You understand? To be able to know, okay, this is the wise one. He's, this one is the master. He's the wise one. So on and so forth. So likewise today in the camp, I can pick up certain spirits. I know this brother, this is the type of spirit he got. This is the type of uh, stuff he used to deal with. That brother right there, this is the type of spirit he got. This is the type of things he used to deal with. The sisters as well, the same thing. You understand? Because guess what? That's how, that, as a father, that's how you must, you must know the state of your flock. You must be able to identify certain spirits and be able to deal with deal teach them out the stuff that it pertains to them so they can be built up. Okay, uh, read on, verse 57. Take also unto you all those that observe the law and avenge ye the wrong of your people. Read. Recompense fully the heathen and take heed to the commandments of the law. So you see what a father is doing? A father will give instructions to his sons and daughters. A father will command his children in his household after him. So right now, this is the house of the Lord. You are the children that needs to be instructed of God's commandments. You can live correctly so we can build this family. This is a family. I hope you brothers and sisters see that. Okay, watch this. Give me the book of First Kings chapter 2 verse 1. Because King David said the same thing to Solomon. What he must do. He, as a father, he gave him a command and a charge of what he needs to do in order for him to be successful in his life. First Kings chapter 2, verse 1. The book of First Kings chapter 2, verses 1. Mm -hmm. Now the days of David drew near that he should die, and he charged Solomon his son, saying, mm. I go the way of all the earth, be thou strong therefore, and shew thyself a man. So now, you see what he's saying? I go the way of all the earth, be thou strong therefore, and show thyself a man. So what are we reading here? David is about to go. He's about to go and sleep with his father. So now he's charging his son Solomon. Say, listen, be strong therefore, and show yourself a man. Isn't it the same thing that we read in First Maccabees? It's the same thing. Read that again. Go back to First Maccabees. He's coming back here. First Maccabees chapter 2, verse 64. The book of First Maccabees, chapter 2, verses 64. Wherefore, ye, my sons, be valiant and shew yourselves men in the behalf of the law, for by it ye shall obtain glory. For by it you shall obtain glory. Now watch this. Um, go back to First Kings now. First Kings, chapter 2. 
First Kings chapter two, verse two again. First Kings chapter two, verse two. I go the way of all the earth. Be thou strong, therefore, and show thyself a man. So now King David is telling his son Solomon, listen, you must stand up for this Bible. Do not be standing up for politics or religion or Christianity. None of that garbage. Stand up for the laws, statutes, and commandments that was given to us to rule the earth. That is what King David is telling his son Solomon. As a father, that was his responsibility. The same thing that Marathias did with his father. Okay, go ahead. And keep the charge of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes and his commandments and his judgments and his testimonies as it is written in the law of Moses, that thou mayest prosper in all that thou doest and whithersoever thou turnest thyself. So now King David is telling Solomon, listen, this is the key to success right here. This is how you become a man. This is how you become, this is how you become a king. This is how you maintain, you maintain your kingship. This is how you're going to be able to rule over the nation of Israel with justice and judgment. Okay, go ahead. That the Lord may continue his word, which he spake concerning me, saying, If thy children take heed to their way, to walk before me in truth with all their heart and with all their soul, they shall not fail thee, said he, a man on the throne of Israel. You see what he's saying? Now he's telling him, listen, the key to your success, Solomon, this is what you must do. You go outside of this, you are not going to make it. That's what he's telling him. Okay? This is what father, father, this is a father supposed to give instruction exactly as it is written. No fear, no favor. To, why? To make sure that the sons understand and the daughters understand what is required of them. Watch this. Give me First Chronicles 28 verse 9. First Chronicles chapter 28 verse 9. First Chronicles chapter 28, verse 9. And thou, Solomon, my son, know thou the God of thy father, and serve him with a perfect heart and with a willing mind. For the Lord searcheth all hearts and understandeth all the imaginations of the thoughts. If thou seek him, he will be found of thee. But if thou forsake him, he will cast thee off forever. So now again, King, King David is warning King Solomon. Listen, you must what he says, know thou the God of thy father and serve him with a perfect heart and with a willing mind. Sincerity and in truth, that's what the Lord wants. Sincerity and in truth, don't be faking the fun. Look at the, the, the history of our forefathers. They were meek, you understand? They were humble. They humbled themselves to the words of the Most High and they did as it was commanded of them. That's why today we have the, the privilege of being woken up in the last days because if it was up to the Lord, he wouldn't wake us up. Okay? Watch this. Give me the book of Tobit. Give me Tobit. Okay, this is Tobit and his son Tobias. Give me Tobit chapter 4. Let's start at verse 1. Tobit 4 verse 1. Tobit chapter 4 verse 1. In that day, Tobit remembered the money which he had which he had committed to Gabriel in rigs of media. In rages, rages, rages of media. In rages of media. Rage. And said with himself, I have wished for death. Wherefore do I not call for my son Tobias that I might that I may signify to him of the money before I die? Rage. And he, and when he had called him, he said, My son, when I am dead, bury me, and despise not thy mother, but honor her in all the days of thy life, and do that which shall please her, and grieve her not. You see what, Tob you see what Tobit is telling his son Tobias? He says, take care of your mother. You hear? Take care of your mother, boy. Okay? When I'm dead, bury me. He says, when I'm dead, bury him. Because Israel don't do that. You ever seen today when mothers and fathers, they die, the children, they are just dead? Listen, the, the mother or the father does not even have a proper burial because the sons and daughters are degenerate. Okay? So that's why now Toby is saying, I, when I'm dead, you must bury me. Despise not thy mother, but honor her all the days of thy life 
and do that which shall please her and grieve her not. Go ahead. Remember, my son, that she saw many dangers for thee when thou wast in her womb. And when she is dead, bury her by me in one grave. Now, why do you think today we do that? We're not necessarily in one grave, but side by side. We do it side by side. The father passes away, that their two souls are going to be here. And then next to them, if, if the mother is still alive or the father is still alive, we make sure that we take space so that when they pass on, we're going we're gonna to bury them next to what? Next to their husband or their, their wife. That's our pastor. We do that. Okay, that's what we're reading here. Go ahead. My son, be mindful of the Lord, our God, all thy days. And let not thy will be set to sin or to transgress his commandments. Do uprightly all thy life long and follow not the ways of unrighteousness. You see what he's saying? He's commanding Tobias to listen. Get your mind right. Stay in the spirit. Be mindful of the Lord our God all, the, all, all thy days. And let not thy will be set to sin. Meaning what? Don't focus on, don't, don't let your mind be occupied by sin. Let not sin have dominion over you. That's what he's being told here. Okay, to or to transgress his commandments, to but do he says, do uprightly all thy life long and follow not the ways of unrighteousness, meaning of sin, of Satan, of the devil. Okay, go ahead. For if thou deal truly, thy doings shall prosperously succeed to thee. And to all them that live justly. To all them that live according to the law. That's what he's talking about. Read on. Give alms of thy substance. And when thou givest alms, let not thine eye be envious. Neither turn thy face from any poor. And the face of God shall not be turned away from thee. So he now is, is also commanding, listen, do not forget, do not neglect to give alms. You must give alms. Okay? Because... We, 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 was Tom is not in captivity? Yes. We was under the Assyrian captivity. That's why they are talking about arms. Okay, go ahead. If thou hast abundance, give arms accordingly. If thou have but a little, be not afraid to give according to that little. You see what he's saying? If you have arms, if you have abundance, give abundantly. If you have little, give according to the little that you have. Read on. For thou layest up a good treasure for thyself against the day of necessity. You see what he's saying? Is that when you give alms, the day when you have need, guess what? The Lord, mm, let me see, let me see, let me see, let me see. Give me that interact. Let me see that. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse, let's start at verse 2. You know what? Let's start at verse 1. Sarah 12 verse 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 1. Mm -hmm. When thou wilt do good, know to whom thou doest it. Read. So shalt thou be thanked for thy benefits. It says, if you are doing good, know to, know to whom you are doing the good too, so that you can you will be thanked for your benefits. Go ahead. Do good to the godly man, and thou shalt find a recompense. And if not from him, yet from the Most High. So you see what he's saying? So when you give alms, always, guess what? The day when you are in need, the Lord will make provision for that thing. Okay, go ahead. They can no good come to him that is always occupied in evil, nor to him that giveth no alms. So good is not going to come to you if you don't give alms. That's what he's saying. Alms in terms of what? The, 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 the funds we need or alms in terms of your deeds that you do in the body. Go ahead. Give to the godly man and help not a sinner. You see what he's saying? Give to the godly man and help not a sinner. I'll prove what, I'm, I'll prove what he's saying here. Give me that. Go back to Tobit. Go back. Give me Tobit 2. Tobit chapter 2 and verse 2. This is during the time of uh, they were observing the Feast of Pentecost. Yeah. Tobit 2 verse 2. Tobit chapter 2 verse 2. And when I saw abundance of meat, I said to my son, Go and bring what poor man soever thou shalt find out of thy brethren, who is mindful of the Lord, 
and lo, I tarry for thee. You see what he's saying? He says, go and bring what poor man soever thou shalt find out of our brethren, who is mindful of the Lord. And lo, I tarry for, I tarry for thee. Man, I'm waiting for you. It's not just any poor of our people. It's just the one that is mindful of the Lord. That's it right there. The meaning what? The one that is keeping the commandments. You can help them. Okay? That's what he's saying right there. Now go back to David 4. Toby chapter 4 and verse 9. Toby chapter 4 verse 9. For thou layest up a good treasure for thyself against the day of necessity. Against the day of necessity. Okay, go ahead. Because that arms do deliver from death. Mm. And suffereth not to come into darkness. Come on, meaning sin, read. For arms is a good gift unto all that give it in the sight of the Most High. That's some heavy stuff right there. It says, for arms is a good gift unto all that give, that give it in the sight of the Most High. So when we, we request arms, we're not requesting it because we want to party like a Sunday. No, no. It's for the benefit of the body. Okay. But it says, for arms is a good gift unto all that give it in the sight of the Most High. Now, remember what we read in Genesis 28 with Isaac, when Isaac was telling Jacob to go and get a wife. He said, don't marry the, 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 the daughters of Canaan. Here's another law. The same law we read in Deuteronomy 7, Toby is telling his son to buy it. Remember, this is a son, this is a father to son uh, instruction, command. You understand? Or how he must conduct himself. Read verse 9 now. Watch, read verse 12. So which of the four was twelve. Beware of all whoredom, my son, and chiefly take a wife of the seed of thy fathers, and take not a strange woman to wife, and take not a strange woman to wife, which is not of thy father's tribe. For we are the children of the prophets, Noah, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Remember, my son, that our fathers from the beginning even that they all married all married wives of their own kindred and were blessed in their children and their seed shall inherit the land. That's some heavy stuff right there. So he's explaining again interracial marriages. You understand? He says, beware of all whoredom, my son. What is whoredom? He says, take not a strange woman to wife which is not of thy father's tribe. Meaning what? We must marry within our race. Okay, go ahead. Verse 13. Now therefore, my son, love thy brethren. Do what? And despise, love thy brethren. You see what he's saying? So when you marry in your race, you love your brethren. Okay, go ahead. Love thy brethren, and despise not in thy heart thy brethren, the sons and daughters of thy people, and not taking a wife of them. For in pride is destruction and much trouble. And then lewdness is decay and great want. For lewdness is the mother of, of famine. So that's some heavy stuff, right? I praise the most high for that. Oh, praise to the Lord. Oh, praise to the Lord. Keep going. Go ahead. Let not the wages of any man which hath wrought for thee tarry with thee, but give him it out of thy hand. For if thou serve God, he will also repay thee. Be circumcised. Be circumspect, my son, in all things thou doest, and be wise in all thy conversation. You see what he's saying? So now this is a father giving what, giving a son an instruction before he dies. Listen, I need you to walk in the right spirit. Make sure that you keep the commandments. Make sure that you have a good name. Make sure that you maintain the good name that we built in this house. That's what he's telling him right there. You understand? Don't marry outside of your race. Take care of your brethren. Take care of your brothers and sisters. You understand? Be about family. That's what we are trying to teach you, each and every one of you here. Don't be selfish. You understand? It's not about, it's not about you. Follow command, follow instruction. When counsel is given out, follow the counsel. Why? Because we want to make sure that the family is in complete order so the children have a good example. When they grow up, they say, okay, I know what good looks like. I know, and I know what evil looks like. And I'm going to choose this good right here. That's what this is about. Okay, we are a family. All right. So 
what I want to show you, brothers and sisters, is that the 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 instruction, the instructions that our forefathers gave is to what what was always about nation building. You understand? From Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, okay, Marathias and his sons, Tobit and Tobias, King David and King Solomon, and so forth, they gave they gave counsel based on what? Based on how to build the nation, how to be upright, because if you're upright, you are that you are, you 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 are, you are going to be that piece that is going to be necessary to build that great house, which is the house of Israel. Okay, go back to Sirach now. Sirach chapter forty-four. Read verse one again. Ecclesiastes chapter forty-four, verse one. Read. Let us now praise famous men and our fathers that begat us. Mm -hmm. The Lord hath wrought great glory by them through His power. Through his great power from the beginning. Come on. Such as did bear rule in their kingdoms. Men renowned for their power, giving counsel by their understanding and declaring prophecies. Read. Leaders of the people by their counsels and by their knowledge of learning meet for the people. Wise and eloquent are their instructions. Wise and eloquent in their instructions. Are you reading a different version here? Read verse 4 again. Ecclesiastes chapter 44, verse 4. Leaders of the people by their counsels and by their knowledge of learning meet for the people. Wise and eloquent in their instructions. You see that thing? Wise and eloquent in their instructions. Because what instructions were they giving out? What were they using to give our instruction? Watch this. Give it that in Romans 2. Romans chapter 2, verse 18. Romans chapter 2, verse 18. Mm -hmm. And knows his will, and approves the things that are more excellent, being instructed out of the law. That's what our forefathers was doing. That's what we are doing today, to instruct you men and women out of the laws of God. Today I was focusing mainly on the men. Fathers giving advice to their sons, you understand, counsel to their sons, and I'm going to deal with what? Father, mothers giving counsel to their daughters. We're going to do part two of this series, okay? I'm going to end the class right here. Let's break bread. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. In the honor of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who laying his life down for us, that we may get life. For I received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, you to show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.